Hi there, this is Pat from Accent Pieces in Polymer Clay. And today I'm going to teach you how to make a textured disc bead and also how to make the texture plate to make the beads. You will need some scrap clay, a little more than that, a tissue blade, a needle tool or a skewer, or I have used a um, knitting needle here, uh, a circular cutter or whatever shape you want to make, some uh, Pearlex powder, mica powder, you could use Pearlex or you could use Perfect Pearls in the color of your choice, and um, yeah, maybe a couple of other things that I'll mention along the way. All right, so to get started, first of all, you need to make your texture plate. This is what the finished texture plate looks like. It looks like a mass of river rocks uh, that have been gathered together and just laying there. These have already been baked and I've used them, uh, but I thought, oh, this would be cool to show as a, as a mini tutorial. So to start off, you're gonna take about an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter piece of uh, unbaked clay and you're just gonna uh, roll it to about, oh, it doesn't matter, number two or number three setting on your pasta machine, uh, two or three uh, being from the largest, um, zero is my largest. And you're gonna take some little pieces of uh, the scrap clay and you're going to cut it just at various sizes. All the little stones do not need to be the same size. You actually want to have a little bit of variety because stones are never perfectly um, the same size. And so to get the natural feel, you're going to take some slightly larger ones, some um, smaller ones, and just put them together so that they are touching and just mass them up like this. You don't, you don't want to have too much um, overlap. Uh, it's okay to have a little bit here and there, but if you if you do make too much overlapping, like a mountain, then you're not going to get um, an even texture. And even though it doesn't has to be have to be per perfectly even, you want to have sort of a similar um, similar texture. Okay, so you can keep doing this. I'm not going to do it all the way because it's going to take forever. And well, not forever, but you know what I mean. It's boring to watch. So you're going to need probably fifty or sixty little. Um, um, pieces of what looks like stones and then you're going to bake that in a regular oven for about 40 minutes. Um, here the timing is not so crucial because it's a tool and you're not going to be uh, uh, wor worrying about whether or not it's going to hold up. So you just need to bake that and then once you've got that baked you can take it out of the oven and you're ready to go. Okay, I'll put that aside for right now and we'll look at the making of the beads once you've got your texture plate done. Okay, to make the beads, uh, this is going to be imparting texture to your um, to your clay. Now I need to roll this up a little bit, so just excuse me for one sec. And you take out your piece of scrap clay, and this probably is too large, but it's gonna work anyway. And in order to uh, make sure that it's going to release you can use a spritzer, and this is from my husband's cologne that was used up, and I see it's not spritzing very well, so I'm just gonna maybe add a little more water to it, just a little drop here and there, and just um, make sure that there's water on here so that it doesn't stick to the clay. Okay, then you take your filling, <laughs> and you make a sandwich, and press the two parts together. And I'm calling this my river rock texture plate. I even labeled it. And then when you take it out, you've got your texture imparted into the clay. And if it's wet, like mine is, you wanna get rid of the moisture because the the next step needs you to have, um, have it not being wet. And if you miss a few spots here and there, you can always go back and press a little bit here and so on. Uh, just, it doesn't have to be smooth. It doesn't have to be even. It doesn't have to be regular. You are looking at something that's textured like river rock. So, 
Um, I'm not going to work with this now for a second. I, I need to put it aside because um, I'm going to be working with black clay next. And what I'm going to do is make some spacer beads. And I'm sure that most of you have made these before. This is one way to make them. There is another way to make them using um, a needle tool where you just roll the clay around and make a, a sort of a cylinder around the needle tool. And then you uh, bake the clay on there and then after it's baked you cut them apart this one you're going you're going to end up with <coughs> excuse me with spacers that are a little more regular oh gosh pardon my throat when I talk too much this is what happens so I should shut up right <laughs> okay so I'm going to take a quarter of that you saw what I did I just cut it into fourths and this will make sort of similar sized um, spacers. Uh, you don't have to measure how big they are, but you want them to be sort of similar so that when you make your necklace at the end, they will be sort of, this, the beads will be sort of the same distance apart. But if you look at some of the glass beads that you buy, they're not all perfectly formed and they're not like uh, coming out of a, a press and so whenever you've got something handmade it's it's okay to have a little bit of um, non-conformity I think okay so to make these beads you just want to make sure that they're sort of spherical and then you just press down with I just use the the side of my blade and you can see there and then I take my my piercing tool which is in this case um, a steel knitting needle and you just uh, Put the hole in and I turn it over because I want to have um, make sure that the hole is going to be bored bored <laughs> board stiff on both sides I, I talked one time I taught a class and I thought about having boring beads <laughs> we made boring beads we did boring beads anyway so that's what they look like and then you're going to put them on your uh, other skewer and I'm going to try to do this with with one hand it's not going to happen but I got it on there and then the other one well I'll just leave the other one for a minute okay so uh, the next next thing I'm going to do you're going to make uh, oh, lots of those you're going to make one spacer bead for each uh, of these textured beads okay this is what it looks like when it's finished Okay, so now I've got the texture sheet that I that I had there, and I think it's pretty well dry. So I'm just going to impart some um, Perlex or Perfect Pearls in the color of your choice. And just make sure that you get it on, all inside there. And if you can't get it inside with your finger, then you can use a small, smooth, uh, soft brush and then do the other side as well. And just get it in there. It, it makes a really cool kind of a disc bead. You know, not it's not quite so boring. You could actually even probably make earrings out of this. And so then I would take my um, circular cutter and whichever kind you've got. This one is probably about 5 eighths to almost 3 quarters of an inch. And if you cut right on the tile, then it doesn't stick. I like that. Okay, then you're going to pierce a hole again. Try to eyeball it so that it's exactly in the center. And um, if some of your texture has gone away, you can just go and, you know, retexture it again. Uh, the sides also should be covered with the pearl powder. And now this is why I didn't want to do these first because uh, you get your pearl powder all over everything and then your black beads get a little bit of um, glitz to them too and you know depending on what you want you want to get it then fine okay so that's basically it and to bake these I simply put them okay let's see if I can get my finger in there I uh, basically put them on this skewer and then I set them on, on a dish and I bake them so that they're not touching anything. And I bake them in the oven for about 40, 40 to 45 minutes. I was gonna say one more thing about tools. I'm a real firm believer of making use of what you have. 
Uh, this is one of my needle tools and it's got scrap clay on that for the handle. And this was an actual needle that I purchased. Um, it's, it's a long needle and it probably is like an embroidery needle and it's very good uh, to use as a pokey tool. And you know, when you're making beads, sometimes you need really, really a lot of beads. So for really, really lots of beads, I make my own um, baking tool. And this is very long, sorry for the mess, but this is actually part of a clothes hanger. I, you know, the, the wire coat hangers that you get when you take your stuff to the dry cleaners. Well, I cut the uh, bottom part and then uh, with the wire cutters, heavy duty wire cutters. And then I took this to my uh, buffing wheel. On one side, it's a buffing wheel. On the other side, it's um, a sharpening tool. And it's uh, it's like heavy duty sandpaper. It's not sandpaper, but you know, it's it's made out of steel. And you just roll it uh, against there, just turning it. It makes the sparks fly, but it makes a very good point. And so then you can use it for piercing. And uh, so that's how I make that tool. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this or I hope you learned something or maybe something you want to try. And if you didn't, well, that's fine too. Uh, Sometimes we need just a refresher, and uh, there you go. And have a great day with whatever you're going to be doing in polymer clay today. And if you're not doing polymer clay, I hope you're having a relaxing time or fun time with whatever you are doing. Hope to hear from you again, and uh, that's it from me for today. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.